Massimos, the Castriats, Costa while the dogs and monkey pups, where families drive, Bayless Dunn. Live. And I'm um, very lucky to be joined today by Luke and his mum Ruby. And uh, I wanted to talk about how difficult experiences as a child shape you into the person that you become. Uh, because Luke's a, a young man that I knew when he was a, a little boy. And uh, I didn't meet him again until he was an adult, until maybe recently, about a year ago. And he has a a calmness, a reliability, a fortitude about him that I found fascinating. Now, a lot of that will have come from the support that he was given by his, his mum and dad, and his mum is here today, Ruby. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of that's to do with the experience that you have as well. So I just wanted to find out about what that experience was like and how it, it shaped him from his perspective and from his mum's perspective. So... When, when was the first time that, that you realised that that you looked different to the other kids? Look, um, I think the first time I realised, well, I realised the day that what was it, my, me and my mum decided that when well, my hair was falling out, it was coming out in patches, right. and then we decided to shave it. Right. And I think in you the living seven, room, yeah, and my mum cut it, and I think it was definitely harder for you than it was for me. I think at the time, but. That was the first time I thought, oh, this is a lot different. And then... And that's, oh, when, you, that's when you were seven years old. Yeah, yeah. I knew kind of straight away that I was going to look different from everybody right. else. Right. Like, from that moment onwards, when we decided to cut it all off. So. Uh, and and, and it looked better to cut it off, to be fair. So, yeah. yeah. And, and Ruby, now, a kid going to school when they're five, I'm assuming would be stressful anyway for a parent because you're thinking what they're going to experience. So yeah. knowing that Luke was going into that environment, when, you're, when you don't look different... How difficult was that? Yeah. So, he, well, he's, he's always been funny, look, but you kind of really ramped up the comedy. And I wondered whether that was part of, without you even realising, that was part of your defence thing. He ah. just was making people laugh. Like, not getting into trouble in class as such, right. but... No, but, no, but that, that's, actually, that's actually one of my other questions. Right. So that, that's how, um, how... That was his coping mechanism. Yeah. But this is about you looking at Luke recognising the situation that he's in and projecting that onto when we were at school, what would have happened? Because we know you would have got... So, uh, I know. So, I, I kind of had to remove those thoughts from my head and I would just say to look like, you're such a good-looking guy, you're so handsome, you can do anything, you're great at this and that, and but I'd then go away and go, what the fuck am I going to do? Like, and I had all sorts of... We'd go to all sorts of doctors and our own GP and then we would go to... Like uh, homopathic doctors, right. kinesiologists. What's that? Um, kinesiologists is when they um, kind of f f uh, tap into the energy and they feel your pulse in your body. I know, <laughs> really weird. <laughs> also took them to see a hair specialist, which does sound really weird because they check. It was up in Perthshire, and they checked your hair. Obviously, Luke didn't have any hair, so she had to take a sample of his toenail and test it for all sorts of things that right. could have caused. Um, the hair loss and that yeah so all those things I was trying to fix and one time I remember going back to the doctors and the doctor said so what's the problem and Luke looked at me and went I don't have a problem she's the one that's got the problem no way I know and you could have only you what must age? have been about nine or eight or nine amazing. he worked out sooner than I did that's amazing yeah and but I like to take credit for some of that <laughs> can we go back to the what was the name of the, kin what the what, kinesiologist kinesiologist now look you're obviously a smart, funny kid at this point, and you're in this place, and you've got somebody. Um, what was that like? Like, was there points where you were going, "What am I doing here?" Oh, it was com completely bizarre. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't know, but I, I was also kind of too young to understand what the point of it was as well. Right. You know. Right. So. But there come yeah, away. The weirdest things, like, thing was definitely this woman just taking my toenail off me. I thought. Was, what, a whole toenail? Because oh, snip, she snipped a bit snipped of a toenail. toenail off also. That was bizarre, really strange, but... <laughs> and um, also, I didn't mind doing it. Our toenail was made from the same stuff as hair. Yeah, keratin. Oh, so it's the right, same protein. Yeah. Right. So she was trying to research, and she's got a pretty good name, you know. Right. I think Princess Diana went to her or something. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but she did, I remember her saying to me at one point, you fell asleep. And she said, what does he drink? And I said, he drinks a lot of water and... 
he doesn't have a lot of fizzy drinks, da, 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 da. and then later on she went, he really should stop drinking the vodka. And I went, he doesn't. And what? She goes, no, you told me he drank lots of vodka. And I was you like, said, no, I said didn't. water. And I was thinking, what the heck <laughs> is going on? She's already made an opinion about him. But the kinesiologist woman would say stuff like, you should eat three raspberries every day. That's where you'll get your potassium from. Or right. you should try and eat a bit of cod. And I'd be like, he can't eat fish. He's been told he's not allowed to eat fish. So... Yeah. It was quite conscious to going on, but that will be good for his body. You so should just a, try it. A kinesiologist, are they an expert in yeah. conditions like like look hands? Um, not spec, not per se, no. But yeah. they are. They're all about the whole, the whole body, the whole rather state. than just the our, uh, the the doctor was just. Was it was it any of the treatments that you guys went to see that either of you went? This is this is rubbish. Um. <laughs> <laughs> all of them. <laughs> really? None of them really worked, did they? So, right, right. but I don't think. But in, in the moment, though, like in the moment, were you sitting there going, "Oh, get me out of here"? It's that thing of going. Yeah. For me, it was like to try and get a, a bit of control back and give him something. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. after a couple of years of that, that was when Luke said to the GP, "I don't have yeah. a problem. She has." And I'd I be mean, like, "Whoa!" It was I have to be led right. by him. It was more for an understanding rather than trying to get my hair to grow back. <coughs> like what, why it happened rather than right. trying to. Bring it back, if that makes sense. Of course it does, yeah. So, cut to many years later, do you have an answer yet? No. Well, well, well I had, yeah, kind of, the thing got, I had a really bad allergic reaction. And that was with Tony women. Yeah, she said that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're allergic to kinesiology? <laughs> it was her fault, it happened. <laughs> no, it, it apparently I had a really bad, well, I did have a really bad allergic reaction. Right, and, to, uh, to what, do we know? It was a tin of something with Heinz. And they didn't say there was egg in it or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and I holy. went to sleep next to mum. Mum woke up when I was just like a blowfish. And right. then oh. she said that it was You're pretty severe, so my body started attacking itself and it just right. went after the so hair. Is that, is that what it is? So can, can you explain uh, to people what is the condition and how does it manifest itself? Well, it's alopecia and this one, I guess, because my body was put under so much stress in that moment, it started right. to attack what do, you, what do you mean, so much stress? Just the allergic reaction was right. just so But what, 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 I mean, is, do, do, have you, people talked about what actually happens, the allergic reaction is, in your body, this is happening, what, describe what it actually happens. So you're... Oh, anaphylax yeah. anaphylaxis. Yes. Right. And your body... Well, it was quite a close call, that one. So anaphylaxis does what to you? Well, your organs start to shut down. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. And yeah, they yeah. manifest by your... As your airways close over, your lips, lips get bigger up. because yeah. that's your body kind of warning signs of saying like there's something happening to wow. me. You start to lose. It starts right. off with like a little bit of tingling and swelling, mm -hmm. and um, and how quickly from you take and now, does everything cause the same extent of reaction? No, 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 no. no. Okay. Like I've never, I've never ate nuts, but right. I've been told that's what would, nuts is the worst. Right. It would be right. the most severe. Right. But they all happened when I was younger. I've not had a. I've not had encountered anything like that since I was for over ten me. years now. Right. You know, so it's always right. been when I was younger. Because it took that long to cross all the things off the list, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> like yeah. the things that you got, like so now you know exactly what you cannot touch. Yeah. Well, yeah. For that, sure. when you were younger, just to sort to go back, when you were after, like we were breastfeeding you and you're putting on you to different milks and they tell they wean you you're supposed to wean you and they give you a, a list of stuff to do and I would be giving Luke like lentil soup and I'd be giving him scrambled eggs and stuff that right. kids are supposed to, to have right. and he would just kind of push you away and kind of spit it out and I'd be you like you need to eat ah oh, so instinctively his body was saying don't give me it but then I was yeah. going you need to eat and trying to give him more yeah. Yeah. to the point where I went to doctor and back then that was like 22 three years ago right. they weren't very sympathetic to stuff like that and oh, I was like really listen not. he's not eating properly so there was a point where you just had tons of mashed potato and broccoli and bananas and I, and I think a magnum you so, should eat so, wait, 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 so, so he got tested at York Hill Hospital and right. they discovered the five things that he was allergic to right. so when I so when you said they weren't sensitive to it they weren't sensitive what part of it were they not sensitive to well I just felt um, I didn't know what else to feed them. The doctors were saying, well, just keep trying them, you know, try them on hummus, try them on something else. And I was like, but right. these things, and as we found out, is the proteins in those foods that yeah. cause the reaction. Um, he's not he's not able to take and he's pushing me away. He doesn't want them. Or like cake, birthday cake with egg in it and stuff like that. Right. He wouldn't eat it. Um, right. So I would tell the doctor, what else do you think I should do? And they would say, just like mash up a potato or... 
you know, a banana or a... And what was that like? So every, every time you're trying something new, you've got to put that up to yeah. your child's mouth and, and worry about yeah. what happens yeah. next. And then meanwhile, they were also... He got put under a really good um, doctor down there, uh, Dr Haig, who tested him for his allergies, so we found out right. what he couldn't... Well, that wasn't the first thing they did? That wasn't the first thing they did, no. Why not? That came, that came because I was going and saying he's not eating properly. Right. So nobody, nobody from the medical side suggested this could be one of the options. No. Would that? I wonder if that would be completely. They would, that wouldn't be obvious to them. I mean, why would that not be obvious to them? I just don't think they, the I awareness think was true. around then. Really? So awareness to alopecia and the causes. Well, of they didn't it, have or? the alopecia then. What do you mean? Well, sorry. So when Luke, oh, sorry, I'm going back to when Luke was like weaning him. So he was seven months old. Luke had like right. thick eyebrows and thick curly hair. So, right. but that point, his body was reacting to foods. Right. Then, right. when we were trying to find out what was wrong, so perhaps right. his right. immune system also said, go back. When Luke was born, as soon as he was born, he kind of came out, looked to me, and then he went blue, and they took him away. His lungs weren't working properly. He had to get help with his breathing. So right. there's probably his immune system needed time to develop. So they're, But they're given as a standard book of saying, feed him this, do this, do that. But actually, he needed time for his immune system to develop. I think if I hadn't given him the foods when I was weaning him, I do, I, and allowed his immune system to develop on its own without putting this kind of... You, you're literally making up your own medicine here, aren't you? Um, literally, you're taking the blame for something. Yeah, maybe, but also, I'm yeah. not trying to take the blame. Well, I'm saying that... I'm no, I'm not trying to take the blame. What I'm trying to, to say is, um, if we had more awareness, if the doctors had been more aware then, we wouldn't have given him those food stuff, so the pressure wouldn't have been on his, his body. We would have just given him certain foods for, say, five years, and then let his eat different things. Do yeah, you know what I mean? It wasn't your job to know that. Either. Yeah, I don't think you're being <laughs> realistic at all. I think the fact, wait a minute, I, I'm going to take this back off you and I'm going to say the fact that you were aware enough to try all these different things and you were so attentive to these minute changes, that's incredible. That, that's, that's the opposite of what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> look, I'm not interested in what people said to you, right? Because we're all arseholes when we're children, right? So, but, like, what what kind of comments did you get? Like, did... Hey, just to, like, just bog standard ones, like, baldy and the whole slap head and stuff like that, you know? Right. Nothing, like, right. terrible. Right. Mm. And did you always, because of your... Well, that, that one of my questions was, like, what, what was your coping mechanism? But your mum your mum covered it, so humour. Yeah, humour, I guess... I wasn't aware of that at the time, right. but looking back on it, probably, yeah, right. it was. Uh, uh -huh. And did that, and the fact that you are a good footballer? That definitely helped. Football yeah. helped yeah. a great deal. Yeah. Just, it was, yeah, it helped a lot, because it just made it easy, like, because I was quite nervous about going into new situations, but right. if I was playing football, I wasn't thinking about anything other than football. Right. And then, fortunately, I was half decent, so you just, you know, people yeah. just naturally... You know, yeah, you got other together, people yeah, who yeah, are the same. Yeah, yeah. So you just get no football. Is it? Yeah, I'm very glad that I was. I played football. I don't think if I wasn't sport, definitely played a huge part in helping me just get on with things yeah. and not worry about you know being bald or looking different or anything like that. Uh -huh. Did it make you, know? you want to do better? If somebody said called your name, just go and I mean, show them, and I'm going to yeah, score yeah. a million more goals yeah. or yeah, I, I, yeah, probably yeah, did actually, but. When I'm playing football, nothing bothers me when I'm playing football, yeah. so you can say anything to me, it doesn't really, yeah. won't affect me, uh -huh. you know, but it will give me a wee push mentally, like, I'm going to get, I'm going to beat you here, you know, even right. more so, but. So would you say, well, that, that was the other one, like, um, well, one, has has it left you with any lingering insecurities? Yeah, I was more insecure than I think I let on at the time. Once I've been around the same people, I wasn't, but it was just meeting new people and, Think going into new situations like in primary school, I think I went in with a hat That's for right. the first couple of weeks, right. like to try and hide it. I guess although <laughs> you can't hide it, do you know what I mean? So there's <laughs> one kid with a kid with a hat on. Mm -hmm. As if that's normal, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like stuff like that, and then I was fine in primary school. Then going into high school, I was like a new whole new, a whole new bunch of people and a whole new situation. Then I was right. insecure again, and then I wasn't insecure, and you know, and then it's just like then going to America. Even though I was older, it was still insecure about it right. but then I you know just you get past yeah. it so it's always just new situations that I'm in 
bit insecure, even just today, slightly, still. Well, well, what I would say to you is, like, again, this is now me, I'm 53 now, and it gives you, as you get older, there's great things happen to you in terms of how you perceive life yeah. and relationships. And I tell you, the fact that you've got that uniqueness about you is way more interesting than not having it, mate. I guarantee it, 100%. So did you ever end up, um, did anybody irritate you that much that you ended up rolling about the ground with them? <laughs> a couple of times. Right. When I was out, yeah. Right. What, what age? I don't know, like teenager. Teenage years. Right. I, that was a kind of. But my friends were always, you know, they were just as defensive as I would be about really? it. Yeah. Brilliant. So. Brilliant. And do you have quite a, a good group of friends? Yeah, uh, a great group of friends. You have yeah. like core friends, probably like four, five of them. Yeah, that's that's a good number. And I get, yeah. as, again, as you get older, you'll find like those. People that acquaintances, you have acquaintances when you're out partying, but you think you're a, you're a big friend group, but you're not really. But then as you go older, you, you borrow down to the people that have got the same moral and emotional thresholds as you. Yeah. Well, that's what I learned as I got older. Like the people that really care for you and, and love you, like they don't notice it, even though you, I myself noticed it. It's like yeah. then you realize that, well, people don't, like, that doesn't come across their mind, oh, he's, he's bald, they just know you yeah. for, or having a big nose or anything. Like they don't, they don't yeah. that's not part of you to them, it's yeah. just like who you are. That yeah. matters yeah. rather than your appearance or yeah. something like that. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? Okay. So, what parts of your personality do you think it fortified? I mean, there's nothing really like bothers me. You yeah. know, like you can yeah. say what you want, or sometimes maybe things should bother me more than they do. But like, pretty good at just brushing stuff off. Right. Like, it's I don't really get like truly angry at yeah. anything, you know. So trivial things, things that other people would bicker about, uh -huh. you just does it. Like, usually I'll just like have a laugh at it rather yeah. than like be annoyed about it. Yeah. That yeah, just being thick skinned. Right. You know, and yeah. just overcoming obstacles I think it's helped uh -huh. with, you know. Yeah. Just like when there's an inconvenience or something that's there to achieve it I'm pretty good at going and getting it done. Has it given you an independent drive? Do you need do you need somebody behind you going, Come on, look, you need to go on with that? Depends. If I'm into something, then I'm really into it. Right. Me and Mum were talking about it on the way here. Like, if I'm committed to something, I'm all the way. Right. But if I'm not into it, then I would need somebody to go, right, can you, can you get on with this? Do you know right. what I mean? But, yeah. I mean, yeah, no, just thick-skinned and... I don't know, just good humour. Very dry sense of humour. Right. But I think that also comes from my parents as well. Uh -huh. Pretty funny. And if you are around people who are getting overly emotional I do you still it doesn't affect you you still can mm, I, don't, I don't like that right, right. like the thing that annoys me most about it is like see when like my friend Ryan we, uh, we just go back and forth with each other and like sometimes like he, like he says you look like a thumb or something like that do you know what I mean <laughs> do you know what I mean and like that's funny to me <laughs> right but it's when someone goes like that oh, oh don't say that that's what's more offensive do you know what I mean when someone thinks it's a shame that I'm being slagged for it that's the worst part Ryan, that is a funny joke, mate. <laughs> you know, so he says that, like, you just mentioned me something saying... Like, <laughs> 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 it's a belter, That's to be fair. <laughs> right, so if somebody tries to defend you, now you're yeah, going... That's more offensive than the insult. Oh, well, the whole thing that's going on these yeah. days, you know, about, you know, you're not allowed to say it. Even, even though the person's not, not there and wouldn't be offended, mm -hmm. some other morons, like, giving you a hard yeah. time about it. Like, that's, a, that's, yeah. a, that's the worst part about it is when, like, when, <laughs> when I'm with my friends and we're slagging each other and then someone goes, oh, oh that's a shame. Like, no, it's not. I could, like, that's yeah. more offensive, you going, oh, yeah, no, yeah, that's not right, yeah. like, than the insult itself. No, exactly, yeah. that's... <laughs> I think for me, seeing... Oh, he's had a few good insults over the years. <laughs> with his pals as well relieves any kind of worry as a mum, do you know what I mean? For me seeing Luke with his friends, right. which you're not really privy to, you know, they yeah. come up the house every now and again, but right. because you've been away from home for so long. But it's nice to see them having a laugh and seeing them just treating Luke like Luke, whereas yeah. I treat Luke like he's my baby. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm very protective yeah. still of him. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so it's good to see that. Which is beautiful, I love that. I love that, Ruby. I think that's a beautiful well, That's thing. what mums do though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, okay, when did you first notice the strength that was building in him? Um, well, definitely that day in the GP surgery when he said, yeah, I don't have a problem. I was like, okay. And that was like a, kind of a, you know, a punch almost, a good one going, whoa. Really? I have totally misread this. I'm thinking I can fix him and he's already 
without me noticing he's dealt with this in a way that I didn't realise he'd dealt with it because oh. I was still worrying and I was almost like I was I kept telling them how brilliant he was and you know he's magic at this and great at that and funny and handsome and all the rest of it but he dealt with it whereas I still was thinking we can fix this we can grow yeah. here you'll be fine yeah. whereas he's going that's so, but back on the medical for a wee sec, like, uh, is it, is it, does it reverse ever? For some people, alopecia, yeah. like the, the hair does go back, but right. for me, it, it hasn't. Right, alopecia areata, yeah. it doesn't. But there's been a few things that we're kind of worrying because I was still working, and then we've got you've got a, bro a younger brother and sister, and when we did decide to shave off your hair, because it was in clumps, it was falling out yeah. after he'd had the anaphylactic reaction. Right. And basically, um, we'd been staying in Debbie and Brian's flat. We're, we just right. moved up here. So we're at the top of a Queen Margaret Drive. And we got him and his lips had all swollen up. Two EpiPens in, which is the most you're allowed to do before you get him to... You've got 15 minutes to get him to hospital. No he was in the back in my arms. Or or what? Or what? That's it. 15 minutes. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Wow. Before you get more wow. help. So any parent, any parent that's got a child... That goes into anaphylactic You shock. need to get them to a doctor, a hospital, right. somewhere where right. they've got more adrenaline right. than what you've got in that little pain. That right. just opens up the airways right. for a bit longer. And you practice on an orange, which is fine. You go, like, you hold it one elephant, two elephant, three elephant, four elephant. But when you're practicing on a, your child... Who's, who's in shock. Yeah. And not knowing really what's happening... Yeah. That was really terrifying to watch. But then a sense of calm comes over you because you think there's nothing else you can do but get them there. So he's right. in the back, he's in my arms. He must have been six and a half or something. What was five, five and a bit? Because Rory's five years younger than mm -hmm. you. His parent was Rory. Anyway, we were driving down Byers Road and Neil went through every stop, every red light, and if the cars just let him go. Right. It was almost as though... It was just all parting for us, do you know what I mean? You have to get there. Right. We got into a &E, and there was blood coming out of people's heads and all this was Saturday night. And they just, as soon as they knew what was wrong with them, straight in and right. put on the drip, which I'm pretty sure was adrenaline. Right. And they didn't, and you were in overnight on that drip. Mm, yeah. But what they didn't tell me, but they told Neil, was like, you, you had half an hour. <gasps> half an hour, yeah. And when you, when you're in, you're now in a hospital bed, you've got the drip in. How long does it take for you to feel like yourself again? I don't remember. Right. I don't remember that. Well, you're because you are. You know you I think it was about forty-eight hours, right. maybe a week yeah. in total. Really? So a week of on a drip. Forty-eight hours on the drip, right. and then we got out after that. But and then your body's because you're pumped with this adrenaline. You're like right. you were. Yeah. What does that right. feel like? To be honest, I, I I don't remember. Do you know? the, I remember a couple of, like bad reactions. I remember being like in my mum's mm. arms, but I don't remember like. The whole the, uh, getting rushed through into the hospital and the, right. the drip or anything like that. I don't remember any of that. I wonder what that feels like to get pumped full of adrenaline. Yeah. yeah. Probably great. Yeah. <laughs> Probably <laughs> great. <laughs> but, um, and then, so sorry, so to, to tag on that, and then Luke's hair started falling out. And I remember like, we shaved your hair off, and your wee brother, Rory, said to me months later, went, Why did you take all his hair off? Mm. As though it was something I'd done. I was like, oh, Rory, I didn't do that to him. I said, we were helping him because his hair was coming out. He's probably out. worried. She's going to do it to Rory. That's right. I can't that by Rory. And then sometimes, and I was working, not often, but I do remember one woman coming in and questioning me why I was working. And I went, what do you mean? And she went, well, was your son so ill? And I went, well, wait a minute. I said, you're assuming something about me and my family. You know uh -huh. nothing about us. Uh -huh. You know, and that kind of tiger mum. Where was, where was Luke at this point? Like, he was at school. He, was, at he school. was wondering why I was working. She thought he had some incurable disease. Right. She didn't realise right. it was alopecia and she didn't care uh, to find uh, out. She <clears> just <throat> made... She a, sounds like an arsehole. She is an arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But with stuff like that, you're going, God, you're doing your best to make, like, Luke, you know, all your kids, whatever, you know. Yeah. That they've got going on, yeah. just feel comfortable at home, and there's yeah. you just realise there's that other wee kind of Chinese whispers of people yeah. going on, and the, yeah. and that was all I had to deal with. I didn't have to deal with people like you going to football and people saying, "Oh, there's that wee baldy." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thumbelina. Yeah, thumbelina. <laughs> 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 <Thumbelina. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> go. You do that. Should have got to do that. Now, was there any time that because of your condition that you felt special, like made you feel like, well, I'm different in a good way? It honestly never bothered me that much to think, right. like, 
you know, think much of it. But like, it, it really didn't. I knew I was different and I knew, I, but I don't know, my mum was a huge part of yeah. helping with that. Yeah. Well, that's something I was going to ask you, like, the training that you get from your mum and dad, like, I, I was blessed with my mum and dad, and uh, and I know that you are as well, like, was, is there a point, what, when I left home is when I appreciated my parents, like, so, and I've known your mum for, I've known your mum for 30 years, like, so I, I just know the kind of person she is, like, you know, how, was there a point where you were able to acknowledge that? Yeah, uh, well, probably when I left for America was when I, I truly understood how much my mum had done for me. Right. But we have a, a great relationship, mm -hmm. we're very close with yeah. mum. But growing up, I don't know, I just, I knew I was closer with my mum than other people I knew. You yeah. know, I knew I had a, a like, she's not just think, a mum, just a special person, yeah. you know. But so. I think that's, uh, that's, that's, that's what I would have expected with someone like Ruby, but this is a, oh, I don't know what I'm asking. I don't know what I'm asking you here. I'm going to move on from this. Um, I don't know, I quite like that. <laughs> no, no, I, I was trying, I, I couldn't figure out, I couldn't figure out what I was trying to say. Like, well, your mum would be like that anyway, is what I'm saying, so, but this was an exceptional thing, like. Yeah, even if I hadn't lost my arm, we'd still be just as close. It, that's what I was kind of trying to say in a really bad way. I don't think me losing my hair made me and my mum closer. I think yeah. we're always going and to be... A bit like... That's what I mean. Yeah. The really yeah. shit we had. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. And a bit like Luke talks about how he... Things don't bother him. I know that things have bothered... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying I know better or anything, but I know things yeah. did bother you to yeah. a level that you didn't tell us as well. Mm. But you just kind of got on with it, and I felt like that. Like, there's so much worse going on for other people. Like, look, with Ailes, um Part of the alopecia, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember the name. Yeah, alopecia areata, uh, atopic is the, is the kind of umbrella term. So right. you had pretty much from you were, when you were born till you were five, you were in hospital every other week with your eczema, like bandaged up and everything. And uh, in fact, again, Debbie's mum was in there working and we'd see her quite regularly anyway. Right. So that was something really tough. You didn't really have a good night's sleep. But you'd be in there and you'd see other people with worse problems. Yeah. You, you know, right. so you kept always going, wow, you're luckier. That is brilliant. Mm -hmm. So you're relatively getting reminded. From an early age. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It could be worse. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then to wow. have the fitness levels that you, you grew to have, which still amazes me, like having had asthma and it seems like you can run about a pitch and, yeah. you yeah. know. But wait a minute, so that's fascinating. So... We, everything's a language, right, as you're grown up, right? So you learned a language of of condition. Like, you, you're going into a place where you can see people that are way worse off than yeah. you. So that, that that's a language, and you're going, well, how do I perceive the way that I am? And you go, I'm all right. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. So I wonder if you weren't, if you didn't go into that situation and you were just always around people who didn't have that condition, whether that would have been something that, you know, that strength might not have been there. Yeah, I think definitely when I was younger, maybe like subconsciously I was taking a lot more in than I thought I was. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. just because you're seeing stuff and you're so young, you don't really know how to perceive it yeah. that way. But obviously my brain's mm -hmm. doing yeah. a lot of stuff in the background, yeah. you know. Uh -huh. But yeah, the things will, when I see things didn't bother me, like I never thought I was special or not special. Just things did bother me, but not like just insecurities. But mm -hmm. I think... Everybody has them. So but you're also, the wilder, like, the bigger family, it's not just me, like your granny and papa and your nanny Helen, mm -hmm. like you've got a really good family. Yeah, right? I've been very, Do you mean that we're pretty always blessed going, to have mm -hmm. the family I've got. Yeah, yeah. You know. like nobody made you feel silly, apart from Ryan. Apart from Ryan. Okay, Ruby, how proud of you of the man that Luke has become. Oh, this is where I started to cry. So proud of him. He amazed me. Yeah. Yeah. Come like, Mark doesn't know. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I love it. Show us the love, Ruby. Show us the you love. You know? Yeah, your heart's just full. I can't, it just amazes me Aww. that you've become the person you are um, in spite of everything that's mm -hmm. happened to you. Uh -huh. You know. Yeah, it's good. And you're... You know, you're 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 just a really nice person to be around. Like ever Luke's going away to Australia on Tuesday and a few of my friends are going, Thank God they're leaving the nest and I was like, I've just loved having them all home. Yeah. Like we all really get on. Yeah. It's not 
like a little house in the prairie every day. Do you know what I mean? We've all got our rooms mm-hmm. we can go to, but we sit down and we'll have dinner together and play cards and oh, it's just dead it. nice. Like we all have a laugh. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Like, cause I obviously went to America for four years and I've been mm-hmm. back for the last year and right. it has been good. Yeah. And how proud are you of your mum? No, I'm kidding <laughs> on. <laughs> good about the better mum. <laughs> Uh, very, my mum's achieved a lot. I've always thought that my mum, well, all my parents, like how hard they work, yeah. you know, yeah. you see it, they just do a lot for you. Yeah. So yeah, I'm very proud of my mum and everything she does yeah. for for me, for Rory Grace, for everybody. And uh-huh. I think, oh, well, that's one thing when people always ask me about my mum, I always say, is, like, there's no many people that are so caring, you know, to everybody they meet. Yeah. I think everybody that meets my mum knows they've met a good person that yeah. day, sort of thing. She is a beautiful human being. I've known her for 30 years. No, she is. She's awesome. Yeah. Ruby Flowers, the best florist in um, maybe the world. <laughs> 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 and what what were you doing in America? Uh, I was on a football scholarship. Right. So I was just out there playing football, getting right. my degree. And right. And what? Sports management. Sports management. Right. And I would not recommend anybody does a sports management degree. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> boring. Right. <laughs> well, it wasn't boring at the time. Like, well, classes were always boring, but like, just looking at the jobs I can get with it now, I'm like, I don't want to do any of those jobs. Oh, really? You know, yeah. Well, what kind well, of just, jobs? Well, just in an office. For a sports management? Yeah, yeah. So it's just the business side of things. So right. finance and oh, is it? Right. sales and things that... I'm not that interested oh, in. Sports management, I thought in management of sport. Yeah, right. Uh, so it's not you're not doing oh, no. Well, you're not part of the actual athlete sports. You're the, right. the office side of it, which right. I never knew till I was like my third year in, and it was too no, late to change. Obviously. Right. So did so, you think it was more a physical course? Well, no, I didn't know it was a physical. Coaching I just, kind of thing. Sort of. I just thought it'd get me into more like the athlete side of things, working right. with players and stuff right. like that more. But really, you're you couldn't be further away from right. a team doing this thing. So. Uh-huh. Kind of went the opposite way, but it's all right. And I heard your mum saying that you are going to Australia on Tuesday. What are you going there for? Hey, I'm going to play football there, so I'm going to sign for a team there oh, and really? then coach, yeah. And what's the name of the place you're going? <laughs> Kappa Laba. Kappa Laba. And the team's called there? Kappa Laba Bulldogs. <laughs> How good is that? <laughs> <laughs> and are you, so when you, do you mean professionally? Is that a professional position? Or do you have to? No, it's not professional. It's not technically professional. It's second division. Right. Out there, the second division's not classed as professional. So right. you're only, you're only in training three days a week. Right. I mean, you're still getting paid for it. Right. So. So you need to supplement your income somehow? Uh, I wouldn't need to, but for the visa purposes, right. I need to work as well. Oh, okay. So, you know. They don't perceive that as work? Well, they do, but like, it needs to be full-time work. So I'm only in three days a week, so I need right. to be doing something the other two, two days a week. Yeah. And are they going to organise that for you? Yeah, yeah, they've sorted they me. I'm going, build yeah, I'm going to coach one of the younger teams. So. Oh, are you? Yeah, yeah. Right. They're under That's 14s, good. I think, yeah. That's good. Brilliant. So I'll be doing that. Uh-huh. I, um, when you did ask, so I go back to that question, how proud I am. Look, I... I was saying this to Neil yesterday when I said we were coming over to talk to him. Luke was, is the, ha- the, hand that, the hand that he's been dealt is not the hand that he's played. And that's yeah. what I'm yeah. so proud of him. Yeah. Because he could have easily gone so into nice. like kind of little kind of uh-huh. victim mode. And prior to when we was growing up, I remember like it was difficult, to, not difficult, but going holidays, we would take food with them and pat lunches. You couldn't necessarily eat in restaurants. They weren't. If you go in for a restaurant, they were like, you know, Peanut allergy, they didn't know much about it now. It's yeah. so, so different now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, my family, my sister is a practice nurse and she was really helpful, but she also was very cautious. She's like, oh, you mean you're you're going to go to Sicily, but you can't, where's the hospital? Do you know what I mean? And I've already thought that ahead, right? If we're right. going there, our friends speak Italian, right. they'll know where the hospital is. Like, yeah. you're always thinking, you're not just thinking you're going to holiday, you're thinking about if we get into a situation, mm-hmm. how can we get out of it? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. so I always didn't want to wrap him up in cotton wool. And thought he's that must have there. been really difficult. Really difficult, but also when he went to America, that was... You don't want to limit his experiences. No, exactly, right. exactly. And also when he was going to the States, that was hard because I'd been a bit controlling in the sense of, like, that's what you can eat, that's what you can't eat, that's where you can go, that's where you can't go. And then, like, he's off to America, you're like, <laughs> OK, like, my job's done now, I can't do anything. He's got to take charge of... Yeah. 
all that stuff. Yeah. Um, sorry well, to cut into that. I think you are an exceptional young man. And it's been really nice to spend some time talking to you. But listen, thanks for talking to me about no, it. You know, no problem, yeah. I'm, I'm always interested in experiences that people have when they're younger and how they shape them and the fact that you've turned into the man that you are. So anybody interested in uh, following on with Luke, all you need to do is tune into Kapalaba Bulldogs. But I'm sure they've got a website. And uh, <laughs> maybe you can follow the team and, and see how he's getting on over there. So, Ruby, thank you for being thank the you. most awesome mum. <laughs> Look, thank you for being a tremendous son and uh, guest. And uh, Thank you, Martin. Have a yeah, good day. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. No, thanks. <laughs>